Good morning, Crestview Church. This is the message for July 5th, 2020. And we begin a new section from Laura's book, Live Wide Awake, the second of three. So we're already one third of the way through Laura's book for the summer. And this section is entitled, as a whole, Know Who God Is. And the title I'm going to give to this chapter, which is chapter five today, to kick off the practices for this week, uh, she calls it peanut butter toast. And I'm going to give it the one word title of foundations. Because what she talks about and where she leads us in Genesis 1 and 2 this week is all about foundations. And this is a tremendous message for today. Relevant. So I'm going to get back to reading a text, and I'm going to read from Acts chapter 18 at the beginning, and then draw some conclusions from that, as well as Genesis 1 and 2. So this is a story from Acts 18 in the life of Paul. While Paul was waiting for his companions in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. There was a group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers that began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating for foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, which is Mars Hill, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You're bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps find him, reach out to him, though he is not far away from any one of us. For in him we live and we move and we have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made of human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered. But others said, We want to hear you again on this subject. And at that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, the Mars Hill Council, and also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Foundations. Why are foundations so important? Well, one is because the time is now to evaluate the foundations that we have in our life. Foundations are what sturdy buildings are built upon. Foundations are what we can build a sturdy life upon. And Jesus talks about 
um, this is a central part of his teachings. He says, build your house or your life on the rock, on God and on his truth of who he is and what he's done and who we are and what he wants us to do. Build your house on the rock and when the winds blow and when the floodwaters rise, your house will remain strong because it has good foundation. Um, the same is true when he talks about building your house on sand or let's just say the false philosophies of today or the false gods that are presented to us, uh, lifeless idols, things we pursue, or an anything goes kind of morality. And when the floodwaters rise and the winds blow, the house of our life, when built on this as a foundation, will fall flat. Laura talks about uh, the importance of foundations by giving us a glimpse into her parenting of her daughters uh, in being the one who taught them about sex. She was able to provide knowledge and information before the philosophies of the Mars Hill or Areopagus had a chance to get a foothold. She said, I need to be the first one to have a conversation with my girls about sex about body image, about body changes, about body differences, or the wonders of the human body before they heard confusing information about it all. And when I read this, uh, several light bulbs just went off in my head. So what then does Laura do? She leads us to Genesis 1 and 2. For this week's reflection and meditation practices, foundations... We live in the United States of America where there is freedom uh, to believe and to speak uh, many things. Uh, there's a lot of freedom for that, uh, for religion expressions and religious uh, speech. Today, we have a situation that is very similar to Mars Hill of the early church. Philosophies and religions abound today, uh, all claiming pieces of the truth about our reality, um, our existence, uh, the direction of history and the world, the things that you should believe or not believe. Yet not all philosophies and ways of life and religions, they do not all have equal value when it comes to the truth. That just can't be true. Not all religions and philosophies are well-formed or well-informed. So how is this for a foundation? Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light, a creation and separation of light and darkness, water and sky, water and land, and then a plethora of starry wonders, and then special plant and vegetation creations, and then a plethora and special creation of sea creatures, land animals, and everything in between. And then the crown of his special creations, humanity, man and woman, together made in the image of God. So think about it. Absolute, marvelous, and complex design. Humming with beautiful order and teeming with life and room to grow and learn and explore. And God said it was very good. Cycles upon cycles working in harmony. Earth's energy exchange with the sun and space. Natural soil building, cycling and recycling in the biosphere. Water purification and detoxification. Fruitfulness and abundance within plant and animal life global circulations of water and air, humans created with the ability to learn from it all, from the molecular to the solar and everything in between. That is foundational. Nothing random, nothing by chance, everything by design. In the beginning, God created absolutely foundational. So atheism, a belief that there is no God, 
or originator of all that we see, touch, taste, feel, experience, the amazing complexity of everything we know in the creation and of ourselves. How silly. How devoid of understanding and knowledge. How about agnosticism? A belief that nothing is known or can be known of the existence of the nature of God or of anything beyond material phenomena. Well, Genesis 1.1 makes a statement about the revelation of God that he can be known because he made himself plainly known. We are actually without excuse. A philosophy of materialism, you know, this is all there is, this table, this tree, this physical body, that that's it? That there's no spiritual anything? No spiritual reality? It lacks knowledge and understanding. It's foundational. And Paul says it plainly for us in the presence of the philosophies and religions of his day. He says, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. In God we live and move and have our being. Any other belief system that denies this or attributes the core of our reality to anyone or anything else or simply to nothing or just simply to material things that we can feel, taste, and touch lacks knowledge and understanding. Human beings, along with every other created thing, whether animate or inanimate, were created by design by the God of order by way of special creation with purpose and care and precision. This is foundational. The planets don't keep their orbit by chance, but by design. Our bodies in all their complex systems working together in amazing continuity do not happen by chance, but by design. We don't produce antibodies to viruses by chance, but by the design of the Creator God. Any philosophy or religion that lacks our origin or starting point in the Creator God of the universe lacks knowledge and understanding. 